Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Oh, we got a great fun one for you today. We got this sticky little floating menu up here on the left hand side. As I roll down the site, it's going to stay there. They can roll over it, get to all the links here, sub menu items, bottom item, roll back up. It's going to go there. Of course, it's fully responsive. I'm using Google Chrome here with the inspector tools if I hit my F12 key. Here we have it on an iPad Air. Here's our second menu there. And of course, it'll look the same on an iPhone. I've actually made it full width on these devices, as you can see there. Excellent. No coding involved in this at all today. You'll be happy to know. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable my visual builder. Once enabled, let's get rid of my little row here. And we'll start from scratch. So let's roll down this page, go up to where you want to put it. It really doesn't matter because we're going to use fixed positioning. It's going to end up here or here or here, wherever you want to put yours. If you want it to appear on all pages, you want to build it into a custom global footer. That way it'll appear on all pages. For mine today, I'm just going to add it under here and we'll move it. So I'm going to hit the little green button to add a new row. I'm going to put a single column in my row. Funnily enough, I'm going to use a menu module. There we go. Great. Well, there we've got a menu, which is OK. Of course, I want it to be vertical and not horizontal like this, because it's going to take up too much real estate up here otherwise. And we'll fix that in a moment. So over here, you can choose your menu. Now, only menus that you've created in your dashboard will appear here. For anybody that doesn't know, you do that down in dashboard, appearance and menus. If you're not sure what you're doing, have a look at our Divi for Beginners playlist. Plenty of videos about it there. OK, so I'm happy with that one. I'm not using a logo for this. I just want the actual links themselves. Rolling down, I'm going to put a background in there. I'm using a dark 24, 24, 24 color. That's it right there. Perfect. Let's make our links so we can see them over in design. Menu text. I'm going to make the active link white and the menu text color white. Once I do that, you should be able to see it. And let's make it semi bold, perhaps. Oh, I think I might even make them uppercase. That's fine. Of course, I don't want them butted up against the side there. I want a bit of padding on the left. So we can do that in spacing. Still in design, I've got to roll down. Here's our spacing. Let's perhaps give it 20 pixels on the left. That's great. Now for when it shrinks down to a hamburger, which is going to be on the right hand side, I want to make sure I've got a bit of padding over there. We won't see it on desktop, obviously. So I'm going to hit the chain and make sure we've got 20 pixels on the right too. Now, just for a little bit of extra interest, I'd like to add a bit more of a hover effect than it's got there. It's got a slight one by default, but we can do that again back in the menu text. Back down the text color. If you roll over it, common to all Divi modules, you'll see some little icons appear. There's a little arrow. We can create a hover effect. Desktop, I'm going to leave it white. That's when the mouse is not on it. When they put their mouse on it, I want it to turn a different color. Let's use a, perhaps an orange. That's fine. Now, as I was saying earlier, we don't want these horizontal. I want them stacking vertically. To do that, we can actually shrink this module down. Again, I'm going to go to design. I'm going to go down to sizing this time. What I'm going to do is go down to width. I'm going to type in, I think 120. It's got to be long enough to accommodate your longest link word there. So I'm going to use 120 pixels on mine. 120 px for pixels. Make sure you put in the px at the end or it will try and put in a percentage. And that's not going to work so well. That's OK. I'd like a little bit more padding on the bottom, I think. Maybe even a little bit more on the top. But apart from that, that's stacking just the way I want it to do. And our drop down is working fine there as well. I've left the blue line on there. If you want to change that, I'll show you how to in a little while. So let's just sort the padding back out again down in our spacing where we were before. Let's maybe put 10 on the top. I think that's what I used before. Obviously, adjust yours to taste. I think I had a bit more on the bottom, maybe a 20. Yeah, that's going to work. Now we're going to pop this up over here, make it sticky. 
But when it rolls down over dark sections like this, I want it to be able to stand out, and not get lost in that background as we're using the same color. So you can either put a bright border around it, or I'm going to use a bit of box shadow. I'm going to use this one right here, which will work in this situation. Now, I'm not actually going to make the module itself to make it stick up here. I'm going to do that in the row that it's sitting in because I find the Z index works better. And I'll explain a bit more about that in a moment. So let's save our menu settings, presuming you're happy with it. I'm going to go into the row it's sitting in the green tab. Just so you can see exactly what I'm doing here, I'm going to give it a red background. So background's always under content. Let's turn it red. We've got this nice big column here that's stretching all that way. I want it to be basically the same size as our module. So to do that, let's go to design. Again, I'm going to go straight into sizing. We know this is 120 pixels. So let's use that again in width. 120, make sure you put the PX in so it doesn't put a percentage in. If I move this, it's actually made it that size. And it's centered aligned, it, which is the default. But we've still got a bit of padding top and bottom. You can see that with the red there. We know how to get rid of that. Close up sizing. We'll go into spacing to take it away. Here's the padding top. Let's put a zero in there. That got rid of that. Hit the chain so it'll do the same for the bottom. Fantastic. All gone. Now that's going to work for desktop size. But on when it reduces down to tablet, I'm going to want that row to be back to its normal size so it stretches all the way across. So let's adjust that. We can close up our spacing. I'm going to go back into the sizing at the top here. There's our 120. If we hover over the width, little mobile phone type icon. We can click on it. We can go to tablet mode view. As you can see, it's shrunk it down. Now I want to change that hamburger menu. I'll show you how to do that in a moment too. So it's white, the same as our other one. But I want this row to be full width on tablet and mobile, as you saw in the demo before. So on tablet, I'm going to write 100 and the percent sign. Great, that stretched it full width. And there's what I was saying earlier. We wanted a little bit of padding on the right hand side. Let's have a look on mobile because I want the same thing on mobile. It should inherit it, hopefully. Roll back up to where it was. Yeah, that's going to work fine. Fantastic. So it's the size that we wanted everywhere. Let's put it where we want it. So let's flip back to desktop. Roll back down to our little row here. I'm going to go over to my advance. Remember, we're still in the row here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to roll down to position. I'm going to flip it from relative to fixed. As you can see, it's jumped up on the left hand side under our menu here. Of course, I want to see all of it though. Now you can choose to put it left, put it in the middle, put it at the right, put it in the middle over here, middle over here, wherever you want yours. I'm going to have my top left here, but of course, I want to see all of it, as I just said. We can do that with a bit of vertical offset, just roll it to where you want it. Don't want it down too far. And you can fine tune with the little arrows there. Fantastic. I'm going to pop it away from the left hand side a little bit by incrementing up a couple pixels with that. Perfect. Now we want to make sure that when we roll down, it stays on top of the other elements. Now there it's disappearing. And it's disappearing behind that one too. So to make sure that it's going to stay on top, we need to give it a nice big Z index. Now Z index dictates how elements stack on top of each other. A larger Z index number will always appear on top of a lower one. So you can either slide this up to a nice big number, or you can type in a crazy big number here. Now, when we roll down the site, fantastic. That's going to pop on top of our other sections, which is pretty important for a menu. <laughs> Now, a little drop down, as I said, it's got that little blue default link colored line. If you want to change the color of that, we can do that in the module itself. And also the start, the color of the hamburger wasn't right. So let's go back into this module. Dark tab for the module then. If you have trouble getting to it, if it's hidden behind some other elements up there, which happens with fixed positioning sometimes, you can hit the little purple button. Flip to wireframe mode, wireframe view, they call it back end mode. 
and you can get to it that way and it will be in its original position let's go back to desktop okay change that drop down line easy over in design drop down menu drop down menu background colors fine menu line color right here let's make it the same 24 24 that way basically there'll be no line it'll just drop down to a menu just like that that's going to work for me and the hamburger itself if i flip to tablet view here it's blue at the moment let's close up drop down we go to icons just below it no shopping cart icon no search icon but we have got a hamburger there's that blue color i'm just going to cha change it to white now i don't want a gap really on the top here i want this to be butted up against the menu so we can adjust that in the positioning of the row very easily let's just while we're here check it on mobile we'll probably need to adjust it there too zoom back up to the top great so let's save our changes we'll adjust the offset on tablet and mobile we should be good to go again i'm going to go into the row because remember it's the row that's in the sticky position we go back over to our advanced to our position here's the vertical offset if we roll over it and get the icons up make sure we're on mobile view there need to adjust it you can increment up and down with the little arrows there just on mobile i have it right there fantastic let's move over to tablet view roll back up to the top need to adjust it just a little bit on the tablet too again we can increment up and down with our little arrows here perfect and then flip back to desktop and it's still in the right place great well let's say this We'll take a look on the front end. Exit the visual builder. There's our little sticky menu. It's going to change color when we hover over it. We got our little drop down there. To get off that, we can get to the bottom one below there. When we roll down, it's going to stay on top of everything because we've adjusted the Z index. Let's check it on tablet and mobile again. If I hit my F12 key, one slight problem here. We need to adjust the tablet and mobile settings just on the module. You can see the rows working there, unless you had to like that effect, it's not going to work for me there. And on iPad Air, I imagine it'll be the same way. Yep. And it's too short. So we need to adjust that. That's no problem at all. Know exactly how to do that. We'll debug this and we should be good to go. We'll enable the Visual Builder again. We'll go back into the module dark tab for the module we're going to do exactly the same thing we're going to go to design sizing go to where we put our width in let's flip back to tablet roll back up to where it was make that 100 percent 100 and the percent sign and also on phone looks like it's grandfather in there that's absolutely perfect so let's save our changes now if we've done everything correctly this should work for us we'll save the page changes and we'll exit the visual builder there's our little menu up there it's going to stay there if we roll down the page it's going to be on top of the other elements as we adjusted the z index for it Let's just have another look on tablet and mobile, make sure everything's working well on the front end here. Here we are on an iPad Air. Perfect. And let's have a look on an iPhone. Perfect. So there you have it, guys. There's how to create a sticky position secondary menu that's going to float down your site. As you can see, no coding involved, really easy to do. Nice little feature to have on your site. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video just like this one. 
So once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.